again. Welcome to Healing with John. Today we're going to be doing some ear coning. Right, John? That's it. What do we what do you describe that ear coning is good for again? Just as a okay, quick Okay, so for a quick ready. review again for ear coning or ear coning, um, wax buildup. So people that are noticing their hearing has changed, especially people who wear hearing aids. Hearing aids impact wax and compact it in the canal. So um, people that have hearing aids, they really love having their stomach because their hearing improves. And when earwax builds up to enough pressure, headaches, poor sinus drainage from the upper sinus cavity, uh, people that are allergy sufferers, um, they really mm -hmm. like having this done. And it, it seems to even relieve pressure in the inner ear canal and therefore real close would be the upper sinus cavity has a, a better ability to drain, I think. So people after they're done with this don't seem to sound so nasally when they're done. It's also really good for uh, children, you know, past five years old, if they're complaining of ear aches and stuff, try this mm -hmm. and see if it stops their irritability as well because a lot of times it's just the pressure, but you know, make sure you take them to someone and have a look inside, make sure they don't have an infection that needs to be taken care of. But if it's just pressure related and they're saying, oh, you know, mommy, I have a headache, you know, try this with a practitioner and, and see what happens. So here's what they look like. Oh. I'm gonna light the end of this end here. And then the small end's gonna go in the ear canal. And this one happens to be infused with an essential oil, uh, Yerba Santa. Hello. So um, this company, Coning Works in Sedona, they infuse different oils in there that I think can benefit other things. And so if you want to check that out, go to Coning, C-O-N-I-N-G, Works, W-O-R-K-S. And you can and, put the link to that in the description. Okay. Okay, All we'll right. do that. Cool. So, so now I'm going to turn your head a little bit this way. Is there a benefit for coning, John, when someone doesn't feel like they have sinus issues or anything going on? Well, I've, I've noticed some people talk about um, after having this done for anxiety, sleep problems. Hmm. Um, wow. I have tried it on different areas of the body for other ailments. And I've had people give me interesting comments about how they feel better afterwards. And I'm not going to go into that because it's, you know, the person I'm working with individually. So, right. And the science behind this really doesn't prove hardly anything. And there's science saying that it doesn't do anything. But I prefer to get comments from the people I work with and, and they tell me what it's done for them. Versus, yes, you know. anecdotally for sure. Yeah. I, I was just curious what else I could expect because yeah. right now I don't have you know any particular illness, although I do get migraine headaches. So it'll be ah, interesting Okay, it will be interesting to see what it does for yeah. migraines. You know, the um, bones in the ear canal are so precious and there are many different functions. It's not just hearing. It's part of our balance and coordination system. Mm -hmm. It's part of our response to our envi external environment. Um, and so sometimes just the warmth in there, I think, can relax the inner ear canal, which is very close to going into the brain. And it may help as a sedative to calm different things that are brain related. But, That's amazing. you know, that would be something I would love to see some research on. Right? Okay. Me too. Well, I'll be the human guinea pig. There you go. There were many, many before me. So what do I expect to feel here? Is there going to well, be Well, it's going to be warm and then... And there's nothing flowing into my ear, though. No, right? it's just creating a vacuum. Ooh. Yeah, and then we're we'll like the end of it. And then you light that on fire. Yeah. And I can hear it, but I'm not going to feel. Hot. You you can feel maybe a little bit of warmth and then a little bit of crackling noise, which is oh the wax eventually starting to heat up. And, it's the and then it creates a vacuum suction, right? that draws the, some of the earwax out. Now, when we open this up, and you'll see wow. a picture of this in a few minutes, part of what you see, of course, is the inside of the ear cone, which has beeswax. But it won't be this yellow color. It'll be the color of earwax. 
So I would say probably 30, 40% of it's the ear wax, whatever else gets drawn out of the ear canal. And the other part will be what's inside of here heating up that's sticking to the inside of the ear comb. Is there any special meditation that I should be doing as this is happening? Your voice always puts yeah, me into a meditative there you go. state. Well, I think when you're having this done, what I tell people, and actually cross your feet and open my up feet. the old. I have my legs crossed, there y'all. You go. Okay. The other thing is try to relax your jaw. Notice tension in your facial muscles, the skull bones. It's always where I hold my stuff. How did you know yeah, that? Yeah. So breathe in through your nose, God's love. Exhale that which does not belong, our stress. And then when you hear the crackling, just tell yourself that debris in the ear canal that doesn't belong will be drawn out. Not only will my hearing seem to be a little bit more in tune, but that I'm allowing myself to relax, sleep better, and then tap in beside your head and ask yourself this. What are the migraines about? Check your stressors. Don't think, feel. You know, ask your divine wisdom. What do I need to know today in this moment that allows me to heal, to be more connected at the soul level, not the brain? And one of the things that can happen too, if you have a real light finger touch like I have underneath the cone, the cone may move. And if you just feel like it's you're balancing a real light weight, let it go where it wants to go because I think what's happening is the bones might be moving into a better position that's more efficient. We have the ability to heal ourselves when we are out of our brain. When we're out of our brain. Yeah, it's I think the brain job. only knows questions, the story stuck in the loop. If we're feeling what's going on, then we access our internal wisdom, the light within, which is the power of the Holy Spirit, telling you what's going on. What do I need to be aware of in my spirit today that helps me heal, helps strengthen my walk with God? The brain gets away from shoulda, woulda, coulda, the spirit says, I am. It's no longer the story. It feels like it's getting closer. How long do these usually? It you know it, usually, it depends on you know if there's air conditioning on or wind blowing and stuff like that. It burns the candle quicker, but usually it's about fifteen minutes in here, fifteen to hmm. twenty. And how close does it burn to the ear? Before you take it away my finger <laughs> oh, all right. yeah so my finger gets warm like okay right, we're you're done. done oh there's still a lot more left yeah wow oh yeah I was it's getting so much louder I thought it would be like to hear yeah now. yeah you know, now you can start to hear the crackling in there that's quite the flame whoa mm -hmm. I got me some marshmallows big old campfire in the living room and you're holding the water underneath it? Yeah. In case of, is it dripping or Well, no? it, it, yeah, it does. It drips, you know, since this one's infused with a little bit of essential oil, some of that drips when you first light it. And then the other thing is, is um, as the cone is burning, it creates a little bit of ash. And I just, you know, always, when you're doing this, make sure you have some kind of water source underneath it as you know, far in as you can to catch anything. Is this the kind of thing, John, that people can try on their spouses or try at home, or should they get training I, to do first? Yeah, I would go see someone that does this, that's been trained, and then if that person feels comfortable, 
in showing you and teaching you how to do this for someone that may have a chronic problem, then that's okay. But um, yeah, I because there's flame involved, obviously. Are yeah, there are I, there any other risks? Like what else if someone doesn't know what they're doing? How else could you damage? Well, the you, when you, you no, if you jam it in there, yeah. I mean, when you're putting okay. your cone in, be very gentle. And I have people usually kind of relax their jaw a little bit because it does open it. Because everybody's ear canal, different shape, and even on us individually, one can look different than the other, different size, mm -hmm. uh, different size opening. And so you've got to, you know, see that ear canal before you put it in there and put it in there very, very gently. Especially with kids that might have an earache. You know, um, if they're hurting in there, you don't want to be sticking something in there. They they can really fight it. And so um, I would rather have somebody that does this on a regular basis, especially work with children that are suffering with either chronic ear infections or, um, you know, really bad sinusitis, that type of thing. You know, after they've seen their pediatrician and they're okay with having this done, then um, yeah, you want to you want to have somebody do it that knows what they're doing. Gotcha. So my husband gets fairly regular sinus infections, but they're not a full blown sinus infection. It's just I can smell in his breath this like infection, and all of a sudden it just wafts across the room at me. And well, I'm like, it, it could be. Would this help with that? I think it would, and then also he wants to get checked for mold exposure because if it has that aroma that's unpleasant. Is it um, bacterial or is it a fungus? Because a lot of people don't have luck with sinus infections that are getting antibiotics. You may need to go get tested and find out it's a fungus or a mold type problem. Oh, really? And which requires different type of treatment altogether. I hadn't thought of that. About you know, once and you a can year. Go, yeah. go to someone and, uh, and have them swab inside your nose and get on the microscope and see who's what's the culprit, what is it really in there, because um, mold's a huge problem for a lot of parts of the country, so I, I would have that investigated. Hmm. I hadn't thought about that as an option. Um, and then I think also, too, a smell that might not seem normal to you is, is it a food allergy, too? Is it something that he might have eaten that is disagreeing with them and it's you know gurgling in the gut and the gut doesn't like it and the the chemical reactions going all the way up the esophagus into the back of the throat and the sinus cavity so hmm. you know anytime sinus infections are period more than once a year or something you know look at other go see a professional and look at other causes fungus food allergies chemical sensitivities, those type of things. But if it's, if you, somebody has a runny nose and you, you know, they have allergy symptoms, this can make, uh, release some of the pressure and help stuff the drain better and be more comfortable. Hmm. Yeah, he's tried doing the neti pot multiple ah, okay. times. And well, the thing just, I know about neti pots work. is, doesn't change anything. you have to hit it just right to get it to go down. And sometimes it goes down the throat and you cough it up. Mm -hmm. I use a nasolator, which is a syringe, and have it go through the nose and the upper sinus cavity and flushes back out the other end um, instead of going down the throat. Um, so that may be an option. Hmm. But, you know, anybody that has allergies, find out what they, what are they? You know, go get tested, work with an aller allergist or your primary. I think they, at one point, they determined that he had a sensitivity to dairy. Well, that's and, real common, right? Yeah, it was yeah. a naturopath that was like, hey, if you keep getting those recurring things, yeah. then you probably have a dairy sensitivity. So he's cut back a ton on dairy. Mm -hmm. and it's just every once in a while, there'll just be this flash of like this really uh, face melting okay. smell. I got you. And it smells like infection. So I don't know. It's a. Uh, well, it Maybe could it be, is. it could be, yeah, an uh, allergy something. response to the food. Because if your body is allergic to it, when it breaks down, yeah, it doesn't smell very good. 
kind of like smelling that work hmm. for cheese or something going oof yeah real strong smell and it's unpleasant but then it goes away so that if it goes away fairly quickly within a couple of days i would say look at your food allergies. look at the food thing yeah if they're starting to be tested mm -hmm. and the thing is too the things that we had as children um our body changes, you know, and stuff that we used to eat as kids, we may all of a sudden become allergic to it. Yeah, isn't that so weird how yeah. that can happen? An adult onset allergy? Mm hmm I have a friend who recently became allergic to purple grapes, like the red ones that, you know, oh, okay. look purple. And her whole life she was totally fine, but all of a sudden she just started, like, ballooning out every time she mm, ate these red grapes. Yeah. And so now she has to go to the grocery store. She just sort of figured out the pattern. And she'll get, you know, those for everyone else in the family. But for her, she has to get the green grapes yeah. now. And it's, like, so weird that your body at different ages will just mm -hmm. say, I'm sorry, no more. And it could have been a very mild allergy as a kid. But then the cumulative effect over time is now the body's taken a mild allergy and made it a major one. So that could be why it changes as we get older. And also, mm -hmm. our, our food supply has changed quite a bit in the last 50 years, so. Right. We're not getting the nutrients in our food that we think we are. No, that went back as far as 1930 in Congress. A guy said, you know, we're, we have a mineral deficiency in this country because we don't cross plant. We don't put the nutrients back in the soil mm -hmm. like we used to in farming. And so it was known way back then, but we haven't done enough about it, that's for sure. But it's a very in-depth topic. Oh yeah, I can go on for. Know a while. your local farmer, right? Find a what's the solution? Either grow your own food, mm -hmm. do organic shopping at your local store, or do your farmers market, and get to know your own farmer, right? Yeah, that and and um, and see what, how your body responds. You know, if you change. A different sort of food source and your allergies go away well you've, you've helped yourself quite a bit and then also you have to look at your children too you know if you have a food sensitivity or allergic response you know your children may have it too mm -hmm. so make sure they're um, taken care of with that do you hear that crackling in your ears? Oh, I do, and it's just warm. It's like mm -hmm. pleasantly warm. Kind of feels like there's a firecracker in there, but I'm <laughs> trusting you that you're not playing a 4th of July prank on me here. Is this the kind of thing someone could ever do on themselves? Or no, I, always has I to don't be think someone? it's safe to do okay. it yourself. You know, because what if you fall asleep while you're doing it and all of a sudden there's a fire? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right, I didn't know if there was any way to, any shortcut around. Well, I don't think you can relax safety. either trying to do it yourself, so I don't recommend that at all. Okay. It actually is. I'm starting to feel quite relaxed all mm -hmm. of a sudden. I don't know what it is about it. Like you said, just warming up the... Yeah, the when, when I go thing. have this done, uh, within about 15 minutes, I'm asleep. I can see that. All of a sudden, my whole body is just like... Good. Which is awesome. How often do you have it done? I haven't in a while, so I'm, I'm due actually. So I'm gonna schedule that now that we're talking about it today because I definitely have seasonal allergies here in the desert, so. Are you, I want them to see you on camera. Yeah, let's see. Let's see what we get. Let's see what we got here. So that's as much as he left. Okay, I didn't know how. Yeah, I, down to it, you know, like I said, my finger was getting pretty warm. Okay. And this is a fabric? So that's a, yeah. You can see the color difference. That's a piece of earwax right there. And these are cotton fibers okay. that hold it together and also make it sometimes difficult to... Yeah, that's all I see in there. I did this yesterday on uh, a patient of mine that was complaining and... I had a piece this long come out of there oh, no and I actually had to stop because smoke was back now the year it had gotten so thick it closed off and I had to you know, cut the thing off and take a 
skewer and pushed through a big piece came flying out and restarted it. Wow. So yeah, that's all in there. So that's that's good that you know you probably don't have much in there. So hmm. we'll this. pause for a second here because we need to flip around and do the other way. Do the other ear. Yeah, and I'll empty this out and we'll right. be right back to do the other ear. All right, we're back. Round two, other side. The other side. Let's I see. want to see if you have like any mice or I don't know spiders or something come out of my ears. Oh, my God. do people ever get stuff lodged in their ears like spiders? Well, while they're yeah, sleeping? people have gone to the ER with uh, roaches. Um, oh. Yeah, that's, so that's nice. a real common problem in less than desirable neighborhoods that. You know, don't have the proper cleaning and yeah. Right. I had a friend of mine talk it was an ER doc told me about that. He pulled out a big cockroach, this poor teenage girl that wow. was in New Orleans and yeah, that poor girl. Aww. She was just traumatized. I felt it was just horrible when he was talking about that. But he got all of it, thank goodness, because you don't want anything yeah. like that burrowing in your Ugh ear canal so luckily her mom suspected something and immediately took her to the ER and he was able to get it out and how did he even determine that there was something that well was he you know he got his light and um, in you know the scope in there and took a peek and he says I see something in there that's like dark and so he got a small instrument to go in there with some tweezers inside like a tube and you know open her ear canal as much as he could without causing a lot of pain even though I'm sure it didn't feel very good and then he yeah. pulled it out and wow and they just kept cleaning it out and irrigating and she was fine afterwards and yeah um and poor girl apparently was mortified when the guy told her what it was and she was asleep and right yeah I mean, up, you would you expect know, yeah. it would just you wouldn't even know yeah I had read once that we eat an average of seven spiders in our sleep during our lifetime. Oh, yeah, so, like miniature ones. Yeah. yeah, just like sleep with your mouth closed. I don't know how they would possibly come up with that statistic, though. I mean, what scientist is tracking spider uh, cross your feet. consumption? Uncross your feet. Oh, uncross my feet. Yeah. What's the crossing, uncrossing? Well, when you cross your feet, you're tightening muscles all the way up to your spinal cord. You know, if you're flat and very relaxed and you cross your ankles, you can even, if you recognize your body, you can even feel tension in your jaw and then you uncross them, you feel your neck even move slightly. So I like everything energetically open as possible. Yeah, relaxed, comfortable. Okay. Turn your head just a little bit, perfect. perfect. So we didn't have much in her ear come out, which is you know typical of people that don't have hardly any earwax buildup. You may not get anything come out. Um, but by the time people come to see me for this, you know they've been complaining for a while. So um, I always get something that comes out of there, and I even notice their what their voice sounds like when we start and then when we finish. Their voice sounds clear, not as nasally, because you can even hear a little bit of nasally, so my voice is warm from allergies. Mm -hmm. um, your voice sounds better, and people said, you know, their eyes don't seem to be as foggy, because we have allergies here, uh, eyes itch and burn, and they get a little bit of a film going on them. Mm -hmm. um, so your vision gets better, you seem to hear better, and your head's a little bit clearer. You know, that's a nice benefit. And I wouldn't do this with somebody that has an active ear infection. So if somebody's running low grade fever or they suspect they have an ear infection, 
I would ask them to go see their doctor first to make sure because if you're adding warmth in here, you may uh, speed up the infection, you know, heat it up and actually add to a fever response in the body that's uncomfortable. So I, I'm not about doing any of that. <laughs> so, you know, uh, I would recommend people go see their medical professional and have that looked at. Now, after their infection is cleared and the doctor said they're okay, this may, may help to remove any leftovers from the infection because I've even seen dried blood uh, and even some green and different colors that come out in the ear cone where somebody's probably had a previous ear infection within the last couple months. So, yeah. Yeah, what are some of the other things that you see coming out in this and what do they mean for people? Well, I mean, I've seen, you know, when the wind's blowing and, you know, the microscopic pollen that we have off of trees and weeds, you know, I've seen little seeds, little bitty sticks, even like look like a little piece of a flower, you know. So that stuff can get in the ear canal when the wind's blowing out there, and so this may draw some of that stuff out. Um, and because of the fact that it helps people relax, people get mental clarity. They said that they're, they seem to have mental clarity now and after they have this done. So they tell me, you know, kind of, you know, I don't know if this makes sense to you, but my thinking seems to be clearer and I said well you know if I'm definitely open to that and um, you know I'd rather talk the operator of the machine you know versus looking at a book or so I have a lot of interesting comments from people after this is done so hmm. I don't I don't need to quantify it I just support them in what what their body's telling them and just Tell them, hey, go with it. See where it takes you. Go on a personal journey with it. Is that those personal journeys? Uh, yeah. No. I think, you know, like we talk about so often here, is the more we get out of our head and into our spirit, we feel something different. And we're not hearing the voice of judgment and criticism, shame or blame. We're the voice of love, and I'd rather listen to that voice any day and help us get more into our comfort zone. Anything that takes us down into that place for even just a few minutes. Like and that's true, too. I mean, anything that we can do for ourselves that even for 10, 15 minutes, if we get a space of relaxation, clarity, peace, and quiet, please do that for yourself. We're not getting enough of that during these chaotic times. Mm -hmm. um, and anything you can do for self-love, by all means, it, we're not doing enough of that. Um, and I'm certainly seeing more and more people in a healing crisis. And it's just the stress upon stress upon stress piled up. The body can only take so much before it goes into a tailspin of physical ailments, anxiety, stresses, depression, other things that are going on that are increasing. Mm -hmm. And, you know. I guess the thought I want to pass on today for everybody is you have permission to take care of yourself. Um, and if you don't feel like you have financial resources, ask for help. Uh, like I've said before in one of the other videos, there is no difference between receiving and giving. We're conditioned at a very young age that one's more important than the other. Uh, and if we make giving more important than receiving, then what ends up happening? We're not taking care of ourselves. We don't feel like we even deserve it or we're even worthy of it. Mm -hmm. And we get away from that. And, and when we can accept that as one of our personal truths, 
that receiving and giving is the same thing going on at the same time, it changes everything and it ends all conflicts because we're not caught up in that. So as I receive, I give. As I give, I receive in a continuous flow of energy. Um, we stop leaving ourselves behind, not taking care of ourselves. And um, I truly believe that if you're in a healing crisis, anyone out there today, just right now close your eyes and quietly ask for help. And tell yourself, I'm deserving. I'm a source of light and love. I was created in that. It's okay for me to enter into that space and just feel the gift start coming and say, I allow myself to receive all that's necessary for my healing. And I just know it'll show up because I let it happen. I don't have to make anything happen. I just let it happen. And I truly believe resources will come from everywhere, no matter what your situation is. Um, that was a difficult lesson for me to learn, but when I did, um, what I realized is that you acknowledge another person's love and kindness for you when you allow yourself to receive. When you don't, at the unconscious level, you're telling that person, I don't need your love and kindness. We wouldn't do that consciously, but that's what's happening at the unconscious level. So, let kindness show up in your life today. Know that you're worthy. And it's okay to forgive yourself for not allowing it before. You just didn't know any better. And now you do. So, let the resources show up because they can now. And they will. Don't think about it. Don't worry about it. It'll just show up on time as needed. And so now, Hannah, just let this candlelight be a source of light and love for your spirit all that you need for you and your family to just show up on time. Feel the light source in your soul open. Just say, Hannah, be blessed. Receive what you need for you and your family. And see that you're the center of the sun. And in that center of the sun, is the light of love. And what you receive as a source of light and love, the rays of the sun in all directions that it goes out are all the things you love and care for. And they will receive everything they need in the same moment you allow yourself to receive what you need. It's going on at the same time. So everyone, to see that for yourself. I'm the center of the sun, receiving light and love. And without effort, the rays of the sun go out in the same exact moment to all the things you care for, people, plants, and animals. They receive whatever they need around the world. They're truly blessed. personal freedom. Now for those practitioners that do candling different than this method, um, go with what works. There's many different ways that are taught how to do this. 
Um, it's like painting a painting, you know. Go with what works for you. It makes it easier for you to do this. And what um, matches up with your talents and your attachments. Yeah, you have a nice little nap there, was, my friend. Yeah, I didn't fall asleep, but I'm surprised at how relaxing that actually is. You get used to the sound. It's like the white noise or something. Oh, uh, right. You know? Yeah, so Hannah has very little in there. I only see like really one small piece. So, um, say her ears are pretty clear. But, go ahead and tell everyone kind of what you feel from the experience while I go take care of this. Yeah. I feel really, I feel really relaxed. <laughs> it was like, I don't know, having a little sparkler, like a white noise, your favorite white noise. And there's definitely a warmth and it's just very comforting. So yeah, I definitely could see how you fall asleep by doing it. I had so much curiosity about what this ear combing um, would be like. And it's not as scary as I thought. <laughs> John is awesome at it, but not as scary as I thought at all. Anything else you want to say to your friends, John? Well, I, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, if you have any questions or comments, I certainly welcome those and um, please leave that for me and I'll be happy to take a look and try to shoot you an email or even a phone call if I have a chance to do so. Have a great weekend, everyone. Thank you. You're welcome. Awesome. Thank you. Bye, everybody.